And then he banned the people of the town that they could never return to reclaim that town as their own. They are in, in, in a state of permanent exclusion, banned from returning to that town. Hatta until until when? Hatta. إِذَا فُتِحَتْ يَأْجُوجُ وَمَأْجُوجُ Until God and Magog are released. وَهُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ حَدَبٍ يَنْسِلُونَ وَهُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ حَدَبٍ يَنْسِلُونَ And God and Magog, when they are released, they spread out in every direction, which is one meaning. And if you spread out in every direction, then you'll take control of the world. The land, the sea, the air. Read Toynbee. Read Arnold Toynbee. Read a book called Civilization on Trial. I'm giving you good books to read, incidentally. Not comic books. Read Arnold Toynbee, the British historian. Read a book entitled Civilization on Trial. You should get it on the internet. It was written somewhere around 80 years, 90 years ago, 1935, somewhere around 70, 80 years ago. And in that book, Arnold Toynbee points out that modern Western civilization has risen upon the world with a mission. To take control of the whole world and he says the land, the sea, the air, everything. He said it in that book. They spread out in all directions and with the indestructible power they take control of the world. For the first time in history, one people will control the whole world. Nobody ever did that before. The other meaning is that they descend from every height. So they target you and they impose themselves upon you. You can't get away from them. Which town is it? Which town is it? That is linked with Gog and Magog, which is the biggest footprint of all. Which town? We used this methodology that we looked at all the ahadith of Prophet Muhammad Islam, pertaining to Gog and Magog to see whether there was any town mentioned by him that is linked to Gog and Magog and when we had studied all the ahadith we found only one town only one in the hadith and it is Baytul Maqdis, Jerusalem, Al-Quds. And so we said, well, here is a hypothesis which is already resting on fairly firm foundations. Since this is a town mentioned in the Hadith that is connected with Gog and Magan. So let's look and try on the shoe and see whether it fits. It fits. Why can't we do that? So then we looked at Jerusalem. And we found that this is a town which was destroyed by Allah. And Banu Israel were expelled from the town. Even though Allah had given the land to them. The first time that they violated the covenant with Fasad, وَقَدَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ وَتَعَلُنَّ عُلُوًا كَبِيرًا The first time they committed Fasad, he expelled them. And then banned them from returning. For a hundred years they were in Babylon. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to it by sending an army from Babylon. An army that worshipped the sun and the moon and the stars and idols. So these ibad are sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they destroy the state of Israel and they destroy the masjid and they take Banu Israel into slavery in Babylon and so now they're, they're weeping by the rivers of Babylon for the first time in the history of the Jewish uh, empire destroyed the Haikal of Suleiman, the original Haikal the actual temple that Suleiman had built and this was considered to be one of the wonders of the world. Why? Because the jinn built it, obviously. It was a structure, the likes of which man had never seen. It was massive and beautiful. It was a, a, a feat of architecture. It was considered to be one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. So the, the Haikal of Sulaiman was a amazing structure that stood solid for four or five hundred years, untouched. And then Allah Azza wa Jal will that the first of the destructions occur. And then he allowed them to return. And then the second period of Fasad. And then he punished them again and he expelled them. This as well was about to be destroyed in a few decades. And this led to a second diaspora. A second time that the Yehud uh, fled in many different areas. And having expelled them this time, he left a door open for them. Despite all your wickedness, it is still possible. Asa Rabbukum Ayyarhamakum. It is still possible for you to be forgiven and have mercy. There's only one door. This is the door. A man named Muhammad Sallallahu If you shut that door, then tilka ummatun You finish. Divine punishment will now begin. And if you are taken for a ride and brought back to the Holy Land by Gog and Magog, and you return with your facade, then guess what I'll do with you? For in Uttum, Udna. If you return with your facade, your wickedness, your oppression, I will return with my punishment. The first time was an army that punished them. The second time was an army that punished them. The third time it will be an army. Or in Uttum, if you return with your facade, we will return with our punishment. They return with their facade. It's happening now before your eyes. And so Allah returns with his punishment. It is at this time that the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, the hadith in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, that's clear. Look at what they're doing today. These are his words. At that time, even the stones will speak. Ya Muslim. Not all those who are waging war, those who are engaged in a mountain of wickedness and oppression and godlessness unprecedented in history. And so go back home today with joy in your hearts, even while there are tears in your eyes for the immense suffering through which we're going. Go back home with joy in your heart 
that there is a tomorrow which is coming. And so, we recognize the town to be Jerusalem. And we ask the question, who are those who liberated Jerusalem and brought Banu Israel back to Jerusalem? If you can recognize who they are, you have recognized God and Magog. There are other footprints by which you can recognize them. I always have something to say at the end, but today I'm debating within myself because I'm thinking, so there's this human somewhere out there that feels entitled, yes, to control us. They've made us, they've come to our lands and told us what we believe in is wrong, the way we're living life is backwards, our land has issues, whatever the case is, our countries have issues, then they've come with this ideology that they're selling to us. An ideology that even though we don't want to admit, we've been slowly consuming. Consuming and it's just disturbing the way we think. It's making us blind to the truth, if I should say. At, and at the end of the day, since it's making us blind to the truth, these people that want to take power and control everything come in and take over our land, take over everything that we've ever believed in and change it. They now want to mold us into what they want us to be, not what we should be, but what they want us to be. They cause confusion, they do all sorts of things, all sorts of unbelievable things. They want to preach false things to us and if we continue believing them, I mean, that's going to be our downfall, but there's always, whenever there's a good, there's always some bad. So even despite the bad happening, as long as you stay true to yourself and true to your God and your faith is not shaken, nothing can break you, nothing can stop you. Just you'll be unstoppable in this world. No human being can ever disturb you once your faith, faith is established let me know what you guys think otherwise this was very very amazing and it was something 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 very very interesting uh, let me know what you think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video